I'm revisiting this Telephone Central Office simulator that I made a few months ago with an ESP8266 controlling the subscriber line interface circuit module that generates telephone voltage levels and ring signals and allows interfacing a telephone to a digital circuit and providing analog pads, DTMF touch tone decoding, to tell what buttons are pressed on the phone so you can dial out. And this was only ever built as a prototype to work on the concept, knowing that the ESP8266 can't do everything I want, and it barely has enough I.O. pins, so I had to use a GPIO expander just to interface with everything I needed. So I'd like to use something with more pins, but also more processing power, more memory, because this generates audio, like the call progress tones you hear, such as busy signals, dial tones, and sometimes that audio would stutter if I didn't do things carefully, so it was always on the margin. And I couldn't even do certain other things, like playing back pre-recorded audio samples. I could only generate sine waves to do the call progress tones. So one audio sample I wanted to try playing back is the recording if you dial the wrong number and it tells you the number you have reached is not in service and all of that and this is a recording. So I definitely could not do that with the ESP8266. It just couldn't handle it. And another thing here is the RS485 interface. So that's physically taking up all this space here, including the screw terminals and the 485 chip. And that provided a trunk line between this board and another duplicate board so they can communicate and arrange a telephone connection when appropriate, when one calls the other and both lines are free, they can decide, go ahead and turn on the relay and connect the call. I'd like this to be wireless, but again, there's no chance with the ESP8266. As soon as you try to do anything wireless, that bogs this down for doing anything else CPU intensive like generating audio. So here I have two ESP32s where I'm starting over and I'll reuse what I can from functions in the ESP8266, but I'm starting out with a breadboard and working on just getting wireless going between two modules and I'm generating audio out into this speaker to make sure I can still generate audio when I'm doing wireless without problems. And of course I have my evaluation board with the phone slick module so I can make sure I can detect if I'm on or off hook still and do things with the phone. And when I'm sure that I can do what I want, then I'll just update this design with the ESP32 and hopefully remove the RS485 and just get all the functionality I wanted in the first place. So looking at getting rid of the RS485, I need to be able to communicate back and forth between two ESP32s and I want to use ESP now because I had good luck having a maintained stable connection in a different project compared to just Wi-Fi. So I'm starting out from this example, which actually has a web server in it. So looking at this example project, I don't have board one and two, just board one, as well as this main board. So here's the main one and here's this extra board one. And this project here is a demo if you wanted to read temperature and humidity on a sensor and send it back to this primary board and then it can display it on a web page with a web server. The demo doesn't actually have hardware, it's just generating two random numbers and sending it over here. And this one generates a couple of random numbers and sends it back here over ESP now to just show how to do two-way communication. And then as long as the web server is up and running, it'll take the data and show it on here. And I'm still trying to figure out how it all works, but I did start with this. So one of the reasons I wanted to start from this project is ESP32 auto pairing, so that I don't need to hard code the MAC address of the two modules. Hopefully they'll just be able to maintain their own connection by searching for modules nearby and synchronizing. And so then on the web interface with the local internal network, 
and I just renamed these temperature and humidity boxes, it's still showing the random data that comes in. So I may use it to show the status of the phone system or maybe even make clickable buttons so I can actually change some setup, like maybe change a valid phone number that I can dial or the valid phone number of the main system I'm on that somebody else can dial in to on this simulated phone line. But I am generally still having issues. I've always had issues with ESP modules doing Wi-Fi. So that's how I ended up with ESP now working better. So I'm just keeping this as a potential use feature. But after getting the wireless connection with two modules communicating information, one of the main things I wanted was to be able to play back an audio recording. So looking at thisisarecording.com, listening to the various telephone automated recordings, I found that this one here is a voice that sounds the closest to the voice I remember. So I went and listened to a bunch of these and I found three different ones that I could just copy and paste sections out of and create the overall sample that I wanted to hear if somebody tries to dial the wrong number. And I'm still using Mozzie as an Arduino sound synthesizer to generate the DTMF call progress tones. And looking at the example sketch they have for playing back audio samples, the first thing I did was take my WAV file that I made from that website, and this is all it takes to get it to play back in the ESP with Mozzie. But first, the audio file has to be converted into a data table with this header file here. And then that sample just gets referenced within the sketch and it gets set up in this sample player so that as the main loop is running, it'll keep going and getting the next audio sample out of this data array and play it back on one of the GPIO pins until the sample has been fully played. So having a WAV file, the way to generate this data table is by using this Python script to convert an audio file into the data table. So the first thing we need to do is take our WAV file and convert it into a raw file in a certain format that we can then convert into the data table. So using Audacity, if we open up our WAV file, first thing we need to do is change the project audio rate to 16384. So in Audacity, here's the WAV file that I made by copying and pasting bits and pieces out of three WAV files on that website to generate the recording that says you've dialed a wrong number. It's about nine seconds long. And so the audio is 44.1 kilohertz. And we need to just change this. So we come down here and get rid of this and make it 16 384 and just maybe click away to get that set and that changes the sample rate so that when we play back this wave file with Mozzie it'll play at the right speed and things like that. So then we need to export this as a raw file. So if I choose just export audio, I choose the header as raw headerless and 8-bit signed PCM and save that as it says to do right here. Then we need to run this Python script. So I'm on a Mac right now and I have Python installed. So I just run it to say what raw file I'm reading in and what the sample rate is and what data table I want to generate. But skipping ahead a bit, what I noticed is this being nine seconds of audio, when I tried to play this back, it was giving me issues. It was just maybe sometimes, depending, I tried doing this several times, Sometimes it would play it like a slowed down record and it would only play the first couple of seconds maybe, but it seemed like it wanted to start properly. It just couldn't handle all this. I'm not sure if that's a memory limitation in the sketch and the ESP32, but I decided to try something else which worked. I split this nine second file up into three smaller ones. So I'm not sure where I split it, but I might have copied say this much and then paste it into a new WAV file and save that as the proper raw format. Then I might take this much and paste this into a new WAV file and save it as a raw file and so on. Whatever way I split it up, I ended up with recordings 
1, 2, and 3 instead of this big one. So here's the original WAV file that's 9 seconds long. And then here's recording 1, 2, and 3 that are smaller pieces of this. And there's the piece 1, 2, and 3 saved as a raw file. And now I have to run this Python script to convert this into header files for the sketch so the samples can be read in and played back. So here is a terminal open, and here's just a listing of those files. And here's the command line. Using Python, I'm running this script. The input file is the first raw file. I want to create the first header data table output file. And within the sketch, I'm just going to refer to this table as this is a recording one. So that's what I'm playing back samples from. So that's what the sketch is pulling out of this header file to play back. And the data rate is 16384, which we set in Audacity. So if I run this, now it opened the raw, generated the header, and there's that first header. So if I do this for the other two raw files, now I have three header files. So if I glance at a preview of one of them, that Python script turn this into an Arduino-friendly data table representing the audio file. So in the sketch, I just need to reference this is a recording one and whatever it is I need at the time, and two and three. And I don't have a very viewable demo sketch that I can show yet because it's all a mess. But just looking at this mozzie example to play back an audio file, Right here, this burrows one whatever. I would just replace that with this is a recording one dot h, and this is a recording one would go anywhere that it otherwise says this burrows stuff throughout the sketch, and all of that gets assigned to a player called a sample, and then from then on, that's what I'm referring to to play this back. So I set the sketch up to play back those three samples consecutively which to the listener is just like listening to one long nine second sample, except it plays back correctly for whatever reason. Maybe the ESP32 can easily handle three separate data tables that are only so long. So I'll play this back now to show what it sounds like, but there was yet another issue. And that problem is, while these two modules are still doing Wi-Fi back and forth, constantly sending data as a test, as long as the Wi-Fi radio is turned on at all, it's still too overwhelming for the module. So playing back the sample audio still stuttered. And what I figured out briefly is if I temporarily disable Wi-Fi and then play back the audio sample, it plays back no problem. Then when I'm done playing, I can turn Wi-Fi back on. Hopefully these things can resynchronize, which is why I wanted auto pairing as well, and I can do other things. And I should only need to play back an audio sample like that very rarely, because it's not often we're going to be dialing the wrong number. I just wanted it to have a feature set. So I'll let this play with and without Wi-Fi turned on. I set up a sketch to just play it with Wi-Fi on and then disable Wi-Fi and show that it stops clicking and all of that. We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. This is a recording. So that's as far as I've gotten so far in trying to evolve this project. It looks like I can communicate wirelessly in two directions between two different telephone central offices, and I can play back audio samples, which I couldn't do on the ESP8266, and I may be able to have some sort of a web interface to at least look at the status of some things and possibly control some things if this all keeps working. So I may be able to eliminate this RS-485 circuit block as a trunk line between two central offices and just count on ESP32 doing wireless. This part up here just has a GPIO turning on a relay to connect the phone line when ready. That should be trivial to implement, so I'm not too worried about getting this going. Really, the other major two things are the slick module with its three GPIO to actually interact with a phone or a modem. I have to make sure I can still make the phone ring or make sure I can 
detect when the phone is picked up off hook and all of that. Without using a GPIO expander, I want to take these three GPIO and just connect them straight to ESP32. So I've already done a little testing with this module here. I'm able to pick up the phone and tell when I'm on or off hook. And also instead of 5 volts, like I was running it at here, this module can be run at 3.3. And the ESP32 is going to have its GPIO at 3.3. So for now I'm powering this at 3.3. I'm using an external bench supply, and then I have 3.3 volt GPIO going to the ESP32. So I think this part here is still going to work. What I have not tested yet is the DTMF decoder, but that I expect to be relatively straightforward. I just have to make sure I can pick up an IRQ when data is available because somebody pressed a button on the phone. So there's eight GPIO between these two circuit blocks. I just need to make sure I have enough GPIO that there won't be any problems. I can still power up the module. I don't choose the wrong pin and have trouble booting. So using a reference like this can help figure out which GPIO should be safe to use. And here it looks like we have a whole bunch available here, and then some other ones with caveats like make sure you do or don't consider certain factors, probably want to avoid this one, and anything that generates outputs when it's booting up. So I've just been using GPIO in this region here for now, and that's a lot more than I was working with, so I'm hoping I can get all of this going without a GPIO expander and that I can keep adding features for these other things without bogging down the audio generation or affecting the wireless communication. So I'm going to keep building up from this temperature humidity sensor project and then gradually pulling in the features from the original design and getting a PCB made.